before they can hear us. Oh, really? Yeah. So I look at the timer. Okay. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Welcome to the Raw Food Health Empowerment Show. We are here with Mommy Darius, who's going to show us how to grow basil. I have been waiting months for this. I cannot wait. Yes. I cannot wait. So start for, first of all, show us your beautiful basil because it is gorgeous. Ooh, yes. And I love the smell. This is it. Ooh. And this I had, this I had about three cuttings from it that make a one pound jar of, um, uh, Oh my goodness, I had a brain freeze. A one pound jar of pesto, um, which I use different nuts to make each jar. And um, it's, just, it's so delicious. I just love the smell of it. I love it so much that I, I put it close to me when I'm sitting down. I have it in the window, by the way, by the sun, yeah. Mm. But I love the smell. So this is this is gonna survive through the winter. Yes, it will. All right. Um, what I do, I I get good sunshine at my dining room window, so that's where I push most of, most of my um, my host plants. So I'll put my herbs and spices there also. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So start from the beginning. How do we start to grow basil for ourselves? Okay, I'm gonna tell you how I start because I don't use seeds. I go to the garden center and I get the organic um, basil, the little, they have like one little sprout in the pack, in the container that they sprouted. And I bring it home and I trans, uh, trans uh, plant it into a big pot. And you'll be surprised in no time that big pot become many, many branches from that one little. So you big, said, uh, you said you went to Home Depot? I went to Home Depot at the garden center. They mm -hmm. have a garden center outside in the summertime and early spring. And that they have a, a section where you can get organic some uh, plants and herbs and stuff. So that's where I get my, my organic herbs. Yeah. So, and it's so. not just, um, it's not just a basil I plant, you know. I mean, I do a whole, um, I do a whole set of, herbs as you can see right mm -hmm. and I keep this on my kitchen counter to remind me that I'm always have to use these things I do mints also so ma so wait so you went to Home Depot you got the basil uh -huh. plant it's like a little mm -hmm. thing um, right why did you transplant it what's the point of doing that because that's the whole purpose of buying the baby, is to grow the baby into a big plant. But, okay, so they it's- They set the seeds, they already set the seeds for you. So you don't have to buy seeds. You you buy, you might be paying more, but at least you get your money's worth, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so you don't take it home and then put it in a new pot. You wait till it gets too big, basically. I wait, I wait a while till it, yes, yes, okay. I wait a while. So I guess my question though is how do you know that it's too big for the pot and it's time to transplant it? Um it's it's like it's like if you have a baby some, a young baby, you don't keep the baby in a pen. You put the baby out in a in the floor, in the living room floor, let the baby run around. It's so the plants need the plants have roots that come in out real fast. So you put it in a in a big pot so the roots can get to spread and more the roots spread is more the foliage comes up so mm -hmm. that's what you do it you but you it don't you put it in a big pot you don't need to do uh, that right away in the beginning no you wait for a week i wait for a week before i do that yeah. okay that's helpful it's specificity in a, it's in a it's in a bassinet when i buy it 
And then I take it home, I put it in a crib. Put it in the crib. But after the crib, I put it out, let it run, you know, in a bigger pot, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So right. then, okay, so it's already, you already buy it, basically. All you need to do when you have it in order for it to grow is what? You have to water it. First thing you need for all growing things is sunlight. And if you don't have sunlight, you need artificial lights. And they have special lights that you put on your plants. You, you put it on the wall and direct it to your plants. But I don't need that because I get good lights. I don't need artificial light. I get good sunlight. You, you have to make sure that you give them sunlight and uh, um, water. They have to, um, you know, as a matter of fact, there is a site that they could go on that anyone interested is called mygarden.com. And it tells mm-hmm. you about growing your plants indoor, which I go there often and get some um, information. Because sometimes, you know, you don't know everything about these things. So you have to, you need help with it. And I always need help with my plants. Mygarden.com. You need, you need sunlight or artificial light. In. And like if you, if it, uh, on the side, they tell you, like if you're, you're facing the south, what you should do, if you're facing the east. But I get good. I'm, my window is facing um, the south, really, mm-hmm. southwest. So I get good morning sun. I mean, afternoon sun, sorry. I get good afternoon sun. I don't keep burning over my window because if I keep burning over my window, I'm depriving myself from vitamin D. I want that to flow inside. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My plants need it, yes. Okay, so. Um, okay, so that that solves the sunlight issue, but what about the um, the water issue for basil? Is it like finicky? Because I know some plants don't like too much water. No, um, you can know basil is very sensitive when it needs water. The the leaves look like they're falling down, but you don't want to wait until that. I use my finger to 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 measure my. I put stick my finger down in the soil. Mm-hmm to make sure that the soil is moist enough. If my if I stick my finger there and it's dry, I know it's time for water. But you can go to the, the plant shop and they give you the, what do you call that thing that you put in the thermometer or whatever, a thermometer that measures the moistness in the in the plant. Mm. But I don't do that, I use my finger. Mm, okay, so I'm not, I've seen those things, but I don't know exactly how they work. Like, like do they, um, because one of the things I think would be great, and it probably exists, is like if it told you how much water to give the plant. Like like if I'm putting in two cups and it only needs a cup, like it would tell me, okay, stop, this is enough, it dep- you know? It depends on the size of the pot. Um, the pot I just showed is a very big size pot. So by the time you put the water, what you do to, you can actually spray the leaves. Uh, yeah, you Have you been into the green grocery store where they, keep spraying the fresh leafy vegetable mm-hmm. you you spray your plant once you spray them because if it drop from the leaf it drop in in the soil and you can also spray the soil which is a good way to keep your plants um well moist um but the, when you when you buy it it will tell you 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 go and research your plant it will tell you how much water you should give it and you don't don't drown it with water Oh, okay. It's such so a difference for, like when you, when you have them outside and the mm-hmm. rain comes down, the rain, water is good for plants. Yeah. But like in Florida right now, we get heavy rains every day. So probably, that must, that good. must, and in the day, the, the sun is pretty strong. So I don't even know. I don't think something like this would do well outside right now. Um it's only to try it though it's to try it like the heavy rain sometimes yes because we had heavy rain yesterday and it was um we had a lot of uh we hail hail mm-hmm. hailstones was coming down they look like big blocks of ice and i think my i was feeling sorry for my basil because it was outside it was yesterday the day before and it the hail hit the plant so much that everything was hanging down but if you're gonna get those kind of weather 
you'd have to put your plants on inside and put them away from if you have an awning in the or you have a deck or something you put them on the deck mm -hmm. and those are the best place like people people who have deck on their houses or if you live in a place where it's still warm during the the, in the if you're not living in the northern hemisphere where you get the cold here or whatever you you put you you can plant keep your stuff on your deck because I think certain temperature they can stand up to you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like these can leave outside before you have to bring them inside before the first frost mm. get it yeah and I would think too in New York the air is so dirty you want something like basil you're going to use in your dishes inside because even though you're washing it beforehand i mean wouldn't you be concerned about about that about toxic um, air well you want to know something everywhere we get our stuff from it it, it growing toxic air so i'm never concerned about that i don't anything that i'm gonna eat i don't put it in the front of my yard because we have a. Uh, uh, a main street which you know that that goes along to the highway mm -hmm. and there's cars upon cars upon cars now I wouldn't put it there because I don't in the back I don't have that problem I'm not saying the ear don't come over there but we have big trees in the back so it takes away certain things yeah um, and you wash your stuff very well when you take it inside did you find I that to something to s yeah sorry yeah no, no say what you say no go ahead Oh no, I want to tell you something. Even if you put your, your stuff inside and you, you live in New York, you get dust on it anyhow, so you have to wash it properly. And when I wash, I, you know, you, you, put, you put it into a big, put it in the sink and wash it heavily with the water, like you're taking a shower. That's how you wash your vegetables. Mm -hmm. Massage you it. have a problem. <laughs> I don't really, I, I don't really I massage things when I'm washing them, but I don't want to beat hard on them and I, shake them in the sink like this and i have a you know a thing that you put your your stuff in to strain it so you know it's not a problem it's the salad spinner no not the salad spinner they have another vegetable you know it's the like a, a big yeah big colander but you you know you put it around the sink it hooks onto the sink you drain it right there but so i don't I have a problem with that. i was gonna ask like um the water right so how much water when it's when you first get it and it's small compared to as it's growing, does it ask for more or less water or like yes, how much bigger, how much do you now. find yourself giving it? Like one cup, a quarter cup, like how much at each stage? It, de it depends on the container that you have it in. It go according to the container because if you have a deep container, like mine is deep, I pour a good amount can of we, water. Can we can we see the, the com container? Okay, it's big. Let's let's see if you can move it. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Dang, that's that's a lot of basil. How long is that gonna yeah, this, last you? This, Ma, this you can send some of that, that to me. Oh my goodness. This one though is another one pound of pesto. And I use different nuts because I want different tastes from it. But I love I love um basil. And um they have different kind they have purple basil also. I've never tried a purple. I want the Which purple. Which I'm going to try this year. That's at Home Depot? Yes. You know I'm going there right after this. That is an oh, impressive yeah. pot of because basil. You know what I find though? I find that the Costco's, the Home Depot, anywhere you buy stuff, in every state it's different. Mm. So I do hope you can find an organic um, yeah. area that they have. For, I know they have it here in the, in the summertime. Because it's only in the summertime I see. But then you can start your seeds. Seeds it's something that we used to do when we was in school, but it takes too long. I can't wait that long. I rather go on there already, you know. <laughs> yes. Um so so okay, so I'm I must say, and I don't have the link available right now for the two folks we have on live. Thanks for joining us live. Um we started a little late, so I didn't even put in the titles for this. My apologies. <laughs> That's today, but hopefully it won't happen again. Um, we did do an interview with Adrian of Feed Our Soul and her thing, she actually teaches people to grow food inside using a vertical grower that I don't think you use soil. I think it's just water or something like this. But for like, it's something that I was looking into when I lived in Chicago and I was in an apartment, I didn't have access to, you know, 
a yard or anything like that and i wanted to grow vegetables so that i was really looking to do in our um, kitchen because we got a lot of great sunlight um so that's an option for folks who don't you know but for something like basil i'm thinking to to just have something that can sit on the counter right now but man ma yours is so big you probably have that on the floor no, um, right now because we don't have any heat going because it's coming on to it's it's um, it's fall now. now it's mm -hmm. officially fall, but we're still having um, nice weather. So I have it right at the window on top of the radiator stand, which I have a long radiator stand. I can put a lot of stuff there. But when the winter comes, I move them away from there, and they're in the dining room still exposed to the sun. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's, it's not a problem. But you see, maybe because I'm greedy, why I have this big one here? You get the small <laughs> ones, you know? You don't yeah. such big ones. How one. long did it take for yours to get to that size? As I said, I had, uh, this will be my fourth cutting from this pot for the summer, fourth cutting. And each time I, when I make it, I get a pound of pesto from it. Wow. You know, pound jar paste. Yeah. So, but when you and say cutting, it, you're not using the whole thing. You're just taking a piece. Yes. I, no. No, no, no. Not if you're going to make the amount of uh, pesto I make. Um, you, when, you, when you're going to um, reap You must this, make a lot of what pesto. You, <laughs> what you do, when you're going to reap it, you don't just go and cut off a little piece because you want it to sprout back. So, you cut everything down. And then it flourishes back. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you cut that whole thing down four times. This wow. This will be my fourth time. I'm, I'm cutting this today. This will be my fourth time. I don't wait until it get blossom. Because once it get blossom, I think that's getting old. So each time it ju you just refresh it, it just comes out. So if I cut this down today, in another week or so, you see they start springing up back, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's what I like about this. I don't know if all other herbs um, are the same because I've done rosemary and I don't get the same result from it. Do you use rosemary a lot in your dishes? You know, I, I plant a lot of, ro not not a lot, but yes, I like rosemary. I don't, I'm, I don't like the little leaves. I like to ground it up because mm. I get more from it when I grind it up, yeah. I see, I see. Right. Yeah, the basil, I could see myself because, you know, the um, the Fiber Fueled Cookbook has a recipe in there that is bomb. Oh my God, I, I, <laughs> I don't have basil, um, but I made it recently. I made the pesto without the basil. I had no greens in this pesto. So I just used like all the other seasoning and it was still so good. It's so good, but it's, it's, Obviously, better with the green with the with the basil. Have some more, you know, greens and How phytonutrients. How can you make pesto without it? Make pesto without green. You wouldn't. I you guess you wouldn't call pesto. it. Yeah, you wouldn't call it pesto. But I had to make. So I was hungry, and I've used what I had. <laughs> you know. <Okay. laughs> yeah, I used what I had because where because I live, you can, use, you can use spinach and make pesto, not just basil. Yes, yes, and I just got some fresh spinach today. Um, because I, I was making something that you guys will see soon. But um, I want to go back to the, the water situation. So when you first get it and it's small, how much water are you using, are you putting into it? And how very frequent? Little very little water. So like a very quarter little. cup? Uh, yeah, because the thing is so small, very little. It's like, it's like if you're going to drink water, you wouldn't just pour water down your throat. You tip the water, tip it, tip it. Because you could watch the soil, because it's so, watch the soil, because it's so small, mm -hmm. you can actually see that, the, you know, that it's getting moist, you know? But you don't just throw the water in. You just tip it, tip it, tip it, you know? I see. Handle it with care. Handle, when you're watering your, your plants or your, your, your whatever, your garden, handle it with care. So you're, just looking, you're just looking for the soil to be a little damp. A moist, moist, moisture. Mo it has to be moist. Okay. Because um, it, it it will not 
what it is you can start some of these things in water mm -hmm. they can grow in water some of them right and if, if if you don't have water in it enough water it's just gonna dry up so the, it has to be very moist mm -hmm. right so uh, if, because, uh, now that it's bigger it's like huge uh how much water are you using now um not a lot not a lot now because it's now it's ready to cut i don't want to water it too much um but after i cut these i'll just re-moisten it as i say i had it outside so when it rain the rain helps these things mm -hmm. rain water is very good for your plants and your spices and herbs and stuff but um the water can be a little toxic on the plant so what i do with my water i I let them sit, the water sit for a couple of days before I, I use uh, safe containers of water to water these things. I don't just take the water from the pipe, I'm pouring it. I sit the water down for a couple of days. Room temperature. Yeah. So you know what I'm thinking, because I, I use the zero water filter. It takes mm. all the things out. And so there's no minerals in the water. I'm wondering if that's okay to use. It's already going to be room temperature because it's room temperature, but it won't have any minerals. So I'm wondering how that would affect, um, you know, and for folks who are using of, reverse osmosis water, that won't have the, any minerals. The water, the rain water. Is there minerals in the rain water? Yeah, the rainwater has everything, even toxins in it, because the rainwater is okay, picking up everything from... That, let me explain. You get a lot of rain in Florida. Yeah. You're not telling me to collect yeah. rainwater, ma. Please don't be telling yes. me. To no. that, that I'm not going to do. <laughs> I, already, I already know I'm not going to do it. <laughs> well, let me, let me tell you something. If I was living down there, that's the water that I'd use for my plants. Are you because serious? Because people live in Florida. People who live in Florida, yes, they have containers that catch the water to water their Ma, plants. Ma, you will it's end up going and picking up. Let's say I get a bucket. Let's say I actually follow your instructions. I get a bucket. I'm going to find a snake in there or a lizard or a frog. I'm telling you, there's tons of animals here. They like water. <laughs> That's why they're here. You know, those are the, and those are probably the nicer ones. Um... God forbid a crocodile roll up, you know, like just, I just don't see myself leaving water, like anything to catch anything to bring inside. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so what you, what you probably, oh, but you have the filter on your pipe already though. That, yeah, that was, that's what I would use. I wouldn't use the tap water. This tap water has chlorine and everything. So I wouldn't use that on any living thing. Um, but my my plant I had in here, which is just a regular plant, it it didn't die with that water. Um, so I guess it will just be an experiment. That's something to is look plant, into. Is a plant still alive? I put it outside, and so it's been dealing with the elements of severe sun heat for the past few months since we did the construction on the kitchen, which was what July. So that's two months. Um, and so some leaves have died and some leaves are getting really exotic with like two tone colors. So they're getting resilient, right. you know, I'm right. like, Ooh, and my plant, her, my plant's name is Alex. Right. Um, and I, I'm like, Ooh, Alex, look at you. You know, I put her, I put her in the storm and she is getting stronger. You know, a woman oh, of my okay. own heart. <laughs> So yeah, she's staying That's out there, but she's not gonna come back inside because anything could be in there. A lizard could be living in there. A lizard could be hatching babies in there. I don't even know, you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. so I tell you what you do. Go to Home Depot, get you a bottle of neem oil, and you, you put it in, put a little uh, dishwashing liquid in it. and. Uh, Preferably, they say you're supposed to use Dawn, mm -hmm. and you put it in your in the neem oil in a spray bottle and spray the soil and the plant itself with it before you bring it inside because you kill anything sitting in there. Mm, that's the for the regular oil. plant for something you're not gonna eat. Because guess you what, I did that to my plants this year, and not even a mosquito come inside with my plants, and I used to have that problem. The neem yeah. oil. The only thing is when when sun hit the 
the, the oil on the plants, I don't like the smell. It's awful. <laughs> but it kill whatever is in there. Yeah. You can you can spray it on your vegetable too because it's neem oil. And it doesn't yeah. hurt the vegetable. I know one of our customers from EHC, she she had a whole flourishing garden. She couldn't even eat all that stuff. She was asking people to come take things. And the um I guess the pesticide or herbicide that she was using was neem and and um dishwashing liquid. But to I kill think the bugs. I think you have too much you have too much trees in the back of your place there. So I don't know how good a sunlight you get because Yeah, the back the back doesn't get but I don't think something like basil because the front has severe sun like you will go there and you know get it would do perfect in your, your dining room if you put something at the front window in the dining room perfect basil you'll get mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. don't worry i'll come down and hook it up for you <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna try it i think so your your basil plant you just put room temperature water you just put enough water so the soil is moist Moist, and, moist, yeah. And you don't add any kind of stuff fact, was, to I was the soil. Reading something, I was reading something, and I it says water food. Knowing the correct amount of watering needed to help herbs flourish can be more challenging inside your home or apartment. For every plant you you underwater, you can easily overwater another. Mm. So the key is to research which herb like dry soil so that's why it's good to read these things because you can you, you know every herb is different it's like every human being is different they're not two of the same you know so you have to read and see which one need more water some might need a little less some might need a little more so you have to just watch it and um you know which which herb like dry soil between watering versus those that prefer constant moisture and damp my my basil you can keep it very damp damp well damp i think moist because mine stay moist and i don't have a problem with it and and all the whenever you have a make sure you have something to catch the waste the water that comes out because you don't want that back into the plant you don't want the water settle up at the root so you have to have a you know because yeah, those grow spots mold. that right yes Humidity plays a crucial role in, in it too. Keeping your herbs happy. Mm. I keep my plants and herb happy with music. <laughs> Me too. That's what I found worked. I was, that's when I turned into a green thumb. I started to sing to my plants and they Let thrived. Me yes. Let me tell you something. People always ask me, oh, you keep your plants so nice. I say, give them music. They <laughs> love music. Yeah. Because they don't get lonely. They love music. It sounds it sounds stupid to some people, but to me it makes sense, you know? It did to me too, but honestly, before then, I was killing every plant. This was the first time I had three thriving plants. Um, but then I had yeah. to leave. I had to, what, what did I do? I took, I took um, the mother-in-law tongue and the big one. I took all three of them. I took from Chicago. They were thriving in Chicago. But I had other things too. I wasn't just singing to them. I had crystals. I had good energy. Remember we talked about it? it was, I created this really nice oh, energy. Oh yes, the, that's another thing they love too. They love the oil, the, the essential the, oils, um, the essential oils. They love oil, and I find that they love the neem oil. Oh yeah, they look so healthy and green. Yes. Mm. Oh, this says um, Sam that you you should raise the temperature and and. Uh, Humidity raises temperature, and they like um, humidity. Plants, I don't like humidity, but the plants do. And they say that um, to raise hmm. the, the humidity of your garden, whether inside or outside, you must miss your plant weekly with a spray bottle, which oh, I miss. do that. Miss it. And oh, weekly? That's, plant is on, weekly. that's hardly any weekly. water. No, no. Not water in your plant. Missed it. Yeah, I know. But if that's all you're doing, that's like hardly any water. You're still going to water your plants, but because... Oh, additional. I see. Right. You, like, uh, it's, it can get humid in here in the, in the wintertime if the heat comes up. 
the plants them love the heat, but you can't put them directly over the heat. But you put them away, but you miss the plant. They say, you know, mm -hmm. that's like us with our, you know, you put stuff on your skin to moisten your skin. The plants like that too. The water moisten them. Yeah. At night, we tend to have it really cold because, you know, you get better, deeper, more restful sleep when the when you have the temperature really low at night. So I'm a little concerned that it may get um, too, a little dry, maybe? It's not going to do. It's not going to do them anything. Um, for most herb, you will find them happiest. Too. Yeah, you might be right. Between 65 and 70. Ah. Oh. Oh, that's cold. <laughs> that's cold. <laughs> They're going to have to get a little warmer than that. <laughs> Se 70 some? Yeah. They have In the house temperature? 70, but 65 and 70, yeah. 65 70, 70 is cold. For me. We Yeah, no, 70, 70 is cold. <laughs> 70, 70 for me is hot. I guess it's different when you talk in outdoor and indoor temperature. So we'll have to just kind of see... No, we are talking. We are talking the temperature without any air condition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, seventy degree, not low, <laughs> high. <laughs> <laughs> and um, temperature at night of ten degrees, which a slight dip in temperature of ten degrees. So your seventy probably go to sixty or fifty-five. They can still survive. That it's not a problem. Mm. Well, we're gonna try it, um, and I'll I'll will show you how it. So so let's see. You're my accountability partner, so I'm gonna grow this basil plant. I'm gonna start today, right? I'm gonna get the plant, set it up, and then I'm gonna go see Honk for Jesus because I need to see that movie. <laughs> um, how long? Like, oh, how that, long did it take you? But between, like, the like, when did you start to tell? At what point did you start to tell? Oh, it's going good. It's flourishing. Like, at what point oh was it? A goodness. week? Two weeks? One week. One, One week. week. Um, let me tell you something about that. Too. Sometimes you can get a good plant, and sometimes you get a bad plant. I got a good plant. Mm. I remember. I remember one year, and and another thing too. What I find, one year I plant a whole lot of stuff out and I couldn't use them up myself. So I wash them, I dry them, and I bag them. So I have dry herbs. And I think I plant just about everything. I even planted mint. Couldn't use them up. <laughs> I had sage. I had I uh, Italian parsley. Why would you? I did all these. Why would you grow? Why would you grow sage? What were you going to use it for? You use sage to do a lot of things, but I still didn't find too much a sage recipe. Yeah, that's not the only thing I know sage is used for is to clear the energy of a space. So you get it, you you bundle it up, you burn it, and you like, and it don't smell oh, the best. Yeah. You, you, you <laughs> can also tie it in, in little pack in little bags that the smell can come out and put it in little corners and stuff. Like There's a potpourri. You can just use it you use in your house like to for uh, you know. Mm -hmm. And having um having a plant like this right now in the house, it smells so good. Yeah, I bet. herbs make your house smell nice anyhow. So having a herbs in planting herbs in your kitchen does give it a nice smell. So, Ma, if, you, if you're growing basil, don't you think you could grow spinach? Oh, yeah, you can grow anything. Because it, it doesn't so, seem that far off. I'm, I am going to find, I'm going to look for the challenge of the spinach because um, um, a lot of those things you, you have to have, it's just the room I don't have. Because most of the room plant. is being taken by plants. <laughs> Turn some of those plants to edibles. <laughs> I wish I could eat them, yeah. With the economy now, yeah, I wish we could eat the plants. Now is the time to be growing actual food. Although it's good, I mean, it is cleaning the air, so it's good. You know, it is serving a purpose. And I know they're more than that. They're company for you. Those, This is living oh, beings. Oh, my goodness. Part of your family. So These are my children that will... These are my children that will never leave home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to try. So I'm going to try. 
basil. You're going to try spinach. And we'll check in probably, um, when can we check in? Let's see. Um, we can, um, for the spinach, you have to give me at least two weeks because I'll have to have it at hand now. Okay. So I have to make preparation now to bring spinach in. Yes, I don't two know. weeks is fine. I'm going to research it and see how well that will grow on the inside and what I'll have to do. Let's see. What, what, what date is today? The 24th. So two weeks would be October 8th. Right, yeah. I'm going to try. Right. Game on. Game on. Let's let me put I'm gonna put a note here. Ten eight. I need to have my basil. And you're gonna have your spinach. And we're gonna see how are you looking? Because mine should be but, but wait, you have to find out when you when are you gonna get your spinach? I mean get your basil though. Today, right now, after I hit end oh, broadcast. Oh, I <laughs> okay. Yes, I've been waiting weeks for this go, conversation. I should go up to Home Depot and see if they still have the garden thing outside, yeah. Especially now, because we're okay. now like entering fall. So it's some of the things idea. may not be, yeah, available. Right. Okay. I think we pretty much covered everything in terms of the soil. Like, you basically got the soil given to you by Home Depot. So there's nothing no. extra that it, needs no, to be done. No, it the soil. The soil wasn't given to me. I have to buy it. But you got it, you got it. Oh, when you transplanted it, you had to buy extra soil. So what- And let me tell, be, be prepared for a pot like this, a whole bag of soil. Oh yeah, how much is, how, so when you say a whole bag, like how big of a bag? Like I use a five pound bag to fill this thing up. <laughs> That's a lot. Okay, I guess I'm gonna need it's help. <laughs> it's, you know what it is though? It's nice when you plant something and you can reap it and eat it. Yeah. It's a nice feeling, yeah. And let me tell you, these these farmers here in Florida, a lot of them are not on board with the organic. And so I'm going to have to do what I have to do because, you know. Let me tell you something. But Sam, I, I know you have to use organic. Um, I have to, yes. You have to. But if you mm -hmm. if you cannot get the plant organic, why don't you try the seeds? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to research and see how... But you said it takes longer. Who has time longer. to wait? Yeah, yeah. But you see, it's not a rush thing. You know, you want to try to see how it works. I'm, Actually, I'm if I could it. get I'm... some basil within the next week from it, that would be great. Because I could see like this. This is the second time I've made this recipe. And, and this time I didn't even have the, the, the basil to put in it. And it was phenomenal, you know. So I could see myself making this on a regular basis. It's just so good. You know, the next time I do it, I'm going to try to do it without the oil because it, it asks for like half a cup of oil. And I'm like, oh, that's a lot of oil. Um, <laughs> but it's like a, it's a pasta Let dish. Me. So, you know how pasta stick together. It, Let me tell you, when I'm making recipe and the outside oil, I use half oil, half water. I was thinking to do half vinegar. Sometimes the vinegar changes the taste. The taste, but I like so vinegar. To, yes. So that's why I use the water. But I know that you can use vinegar, but vinegar changes the taste. And if you like the way it tastes, you know, mm -hmm. you use water. But I so, never use... A, the way, a, lot, a lot of these recipes call for too much oil, and I'm cutting down on oil. Yeah, I'm cutting down too. I'm cutting down. I'm cutting down. So, yes. Um... But yeah, I, ju I just want to mention something for folks who are not in the group, uh, the Raw Food Health Empowerment Circle, definitely make sure you join because there's a lots of interesting new updates that are happening in the nutrition world. That one of them yes. I just learned, which was so interesting to me, has nothing to do with basil. But since you just mentioned uh, why it's so important to eat organic, <clears throat> and I'm finding it more difficult now in, in Orlando, like getting organics, you know? Um, I just feel like I'm in an organic food Orlando. desert, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. In New York, in New York, it's terrible. I might have to start ordering my organic stuff. I yeah, I'm growing. I know in my favorite supermarket where I check, where I depend on, they they very limited amount. Yeah, I just, I don't understand what's going on. Like the farmers had a meeting and uh, we weren't made privy to what they've decided. But 
But the um, I posted in the group today something, and there's something else actually I'm going to post. But I posted in the group today that uh, they found, they've done studies and saw that um, women, mothers, right, who ate, let's say, a lot of chicken. So, so based on the amount of chicken they had, right, their son's penis sizes are inversely affected, right? And so the, the, the conclusion of the study is basically that, you know, with the chicken, because even if the, because there's some folks who consider themselves health conscious who eat chicken, they say, oh, I eat hormone free, it's grass fed, it's something raised, cruel, you know, whatever raised, whatever. But there's no really way like to, um, to, because the, the the glyphosate, Monsanto, you know, this, this herbicide that they spray on all the stuff, it gets into all the things. Antibiotics are getting into different, like, so for the, for the animals, farmers may have, like, let's say one cow is sick. They, they go to the veterinarian, they get a prescription to, to help this one cow with antibiotics, but they actually give it to all the cows. They give the antibiotics to all the cows. So you think that you are eating something that doesn't have, so there's that, right, the antibiotics. Then the glyphosate, which is the um, pesticide that's sprayed, it's getting everywhere. You could have this, this area that is USDA organic, but wind blows pesticide from another area onto that area, now you have pesticide and you know all this stuff. These things are affecting. So like you have a woman now eating women, and we tend we have a lot of fat in on our bodies because we have to to support our reproductive health. Mm-hmm. Toxins. These toxins are stored in the fatty tissue. It's not just affecting us in our endocrine system. So like you know we talk about endocrine disruptors where our hormones are out of balance and causing all these issues but it's also affecting our fetuses. So you're pregnant with a son now, he grows up to be a man now comparing penis sizes or whatever they do, however this, it affects them. But it's it's based on what mama ate. Mama ate, she had chemicals that affected you, <laughs> you know? So it's like, it's not just affecting us, it's affecting, it's affecting men too. We get, we get um, like even our energy levels, Energy comes from the mitochondria, which is in the cells. All our mitochondria comes from mother. Daddy doesn't give us the mitochondria. Mommy gives us the mitochondria. Our immune right. system comes from mommy. It comes from the vaginal canal. Mm-hmm. When you come through birth, you get your, your immune system from the mommy's vaginal canal and from the breast milk. There's a ton of bacteria and fungi in there that makes our immune system. It comes from mommy. Mm-hmm. So it's like what mommy is doing and eating is so important. Not only what she's eating, but what she's thinking, how she's feeling, all this stuff. It's so important. Right. You know, Emotional so state of mind, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's so fascinating, you know, this nutrition it world. Is. So it I is. definitely encourage you all to join the Raw Food Health Empowerment Circle because we are dropping gems and different stuff, just different interesting stuff that can, you know, help you. I I, I thought that was actually quite interesting because there was a book I read in high school called um, Brave New World by Aldous Huxley, where they created caste systems based on the height of people. And they were able to affect the height of people by putting alcohol. So they, they, they made people in test tubes. And depending on how much alcohol they put in it, it would affect the size of the person. Now, if you are a short person, you're in a lower caste as opposed to a tall person who has more privileges, right? And so this kind of reminded me of that because you know, guys talk about their stuff and somehow it affects them. So it had me thinking, well, how, how, how would this impact if people knew this, would mommy change her actions? Does she care? Would, would, how would sons react to this? You know, so it's just quite interesting. Um, the, some of the things that are coming out. But um, and there's another interesting tidbit that I plan to drop in there today about lectins. But um, but yes, we're gonna wrap up this this call today on um, basil. We're gonna 
get our basil plants going. Ma, you're going to upgrade and get yourself a spinach plant. Because eventually we got to make ourselves our way to kale. I had bought two different types of kale seeds years ago. I don't know if they're still good. Um, but eventually I would like to grow them if the seeds still work. Kale. <laughs> yeah, kale. Kale seed? Oh. Organic kale. Um, yeah, because kale, kale, when you, um, you can, you can grow your kale from cutting the bottom and set it in water. You've been able to do that? I, I, mean, I think you're talking kale? about celery. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I don't think you could do that with oh, kale. kale. Kale seed, okay. Oh, no, kale, no, no, no. But it's the actual kale. seed, I don't have, you know, but I guess... Yeah, we yeah. should talk about that, the cuttings. But first we'll start small. We'll start with basil. We'll start with spinach. And then we could graduate to... to... I'm going to research the seeds and see how to start because I've never done the seeds before. Not since I leave school. We used to do that in home economics class where they do the seeds or science class. We need to class, bring that back. Seed. Yes, it's science. <laughs> it's it science. It's so long for me though, Sam. It's been so long for me. Ma, they don't have that anymore. It's been cut, <laughs> budget and cuts. I'm so, I'm so glad I experienced both world. Yeah. At my age, I experienced both world, yes. Because now we going into inflation. This is, I think, critical knowledge. I know. <laughs> we're we're actually in inflation. We're moving into, into inflation, so we have to plant these things. Yeah. I want to hear and in the chat. Using... And start using what? Oh, Start using our breakfast size uh, plate for dinner dinner plates. Mm, we yeah, gotta, we gotta <laughs> eat less. You said yes. there's two people on the chat. Yeah, there, well, there's two the people chat. watching us live. But I want to hear in the chat for if you're live or even if you're watching the replay. Who else is starting to grow? Are you going to start growing basil and spinach? Are you going to grow with us? Because we, we're all going to hold each other accountable. We have to meet back here October 8th and show our things. We're going to yes. show our pots. <laughs> yes. Show our pots. And our pots are going to say if we've been treating it nicely or not. So you can't cheat. Yeah, please, I would, love, <laughs> I would love to see what your basil or your spinach look like. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I know somebody. I know somebody gonna compete with me to bring show me a bigger pot of spinach. <laughs> <laughs> a whole tray of spinach. Um, great. So like next week. Let's see. Next week is October first, which is um, the last day for National Fall Foliage Week. So we'll probably be talking about some of the other plants that you have taken up all the space in your house right now. I know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I have one more to bring in. I don't know. Yeah. And we'll make it a broader topic. So we'll talk about detoxing your home, which is that's one way with plants to clean the air and also how to detox the body because everybody wants to know about detox. And the best way to detox and easiest way is to make sure you are eliminating every day. So we're going to be talking about elimination. <laughs> That is so important. Yes. All right. Yes. So we will so we will see you next week. And in two weeks, we need to have our pots. So make sure you get your basil. Or if you're doing spinach, if you've already done basil and you, you are on that graduate level, uh, make sure you get your spinach. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye, everyone.